Hello everyone, this is Mr. Appel, and today we're going to look at transformations of functions and parent functions. Um, a lot of this is going to be a review of things that you did uh, fairly, fairly in depth in Algebra 2, and there might be a few new things, and we're going to build off of those things uh, in class tomorrow. So let's get started. You're definitely going to need to be taking notes, and I'm going to be asking you to pause periodically to, to, as you go through this, so, so please do that when you hear me say pause. Okay, let's get started. Um, so first of all, these are all of the basic functions that you should know. I would definitely pause and write these down. These are also sometimes referred to as the parent functions. Um, once you've written them down, a couple of notes. The constant function uh, is sometimes confusing. K just represents a number. So this might be an equation like, you know, f of x equals 3, which is really just y equals 3, which is just a vertical line. Not very interesting in terms of transformations, but we do sort of need to include it there. Um, the rest of these you should be pretty familiar with. Uh, the only one that's new to you is the cube root function. We really don't get into the cube root in Algebra 2, uh, but we will get into it here in pre-calc. So let's take a look at each of these. Uh, so the first one is the absolute value function. What we're going to be looking at for each of these is to make sure you can determine the domain, the range, when the function increases and decreases, whether it's even, odd, or neither, and you should be able to give a rough sketch of that graph. So I'm going to ask you for each of these next slides to pause and try to answer these questions yourself first, and then I'm going to reveal the answers to and, and talk about them as we go along. So you should do that now. Great, so I'm going to reveal... Da, 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 da. There we go. So the domain for absolute value, you can plug any number in, so that's why it's all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Um, the range is from 0 to infinity. Whoops, that's a typo. That should be a square bracket, because you can actually get 0. Uh, sorry about that. But you can't get below 0 with an absolute value, because, of course, they're all non-negative. Um, it decreases here as we go from left to right, so from negative forever down to 0. Uh, it increases from 0 to forever, so from 0 to infinity. And this is an even function because it has that nice line of symmetry and symmetric about the y-axis. And of course, the sketch looks like a v. So that's your absolute value function. Quadratic. Uh, y equals x squared, f of x equals x squared. Again, pause and try to do all of these. Okay, let's see how you did. Uh, domain for quadratic, again, is all real numbers. You can plug any x in you want, or just looking at the sketch of the graph, you can say that it goes to the left forever, and it goes to the right forever, so it's all reals. The range, again, wow, I did the same mistake again. Sorry about that. I have to fix that. That should be a square bracket, because, again, you can get 0 in the range. You can get an output of 0, so it's from 0 to infinity, including 0. Um, the function decreases. Some very similar to our v in the last one in the absolute value, decreases from uh, negative infinity down to zero, but once it hits zero now, it turns around and starts increasing. So your decreases from negative infinity to zero, increases from zero to infinity, and remember those are supposed to be parens because at zero it's neither increasing nor decreasing, so we're not including zero. Uh, that's a local min and an absolute min in this case. Function is even because it's got that vertical line of symmetry, and of course it looks like a u or a parabola. Okay, next, square root function. Again, try this one yourself, and then I'll reveal. Here we go. That was my really awesome drum roll. See if I did this one right with the domain and range. Uh, looks like I did. Domain, you can include zero because you can take the square root of zero, but you can't take the square root of a negative, so you notice... On the graph, you can see it's not defined left of zero, and of course you can't plug an x in that's less than zero into this function, so that's why the domain is from zero to infinity. Range, same thing, your outputs are always non-negative in a square root, so it's zero to infinity. Decreasing, well, if you follow this along, it's not defined over here, and once it is defined, it's going up, 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 up forever. So it's always increasing where it's defined. So it increases from zero to infinity. It's neither even nor odd. It certainly can't have any symmetry if it's only on one side of the y-axis. Okay, next up, 
the cubic function. Again, try this on your own. I'll spare you the horrible drum roll attempt, but here we go. So the domain for a cubic is all reals. You can cube any number you want. The range is also all reals. It goes down forever and it goes up forever. So that means it has a domain, uh, sorry, the range is also all real numbers. You can get any number out. Uh, decreasing and increasing, as you go from left to right, this thing is always going up, always increasing uh, as you go from left to right. So that's why it decreases never and it increases forever. It increases from negative infinity to infinity. This is an odd function. Uh, because it has uh, point symmetry or 180 degree rotational symmetry. And oh, having some clicking trouble there. Let me try this. You'll notice if I. Oh, I missed it. Let me try that again. See how well this works. If we rotate it 180 degrees, it looks exactly the same as it did the first time. So that's why that's odd. Okay, next up the cube root function. Now, this is a new one for you, so you might have to think a little bit more about this. Um, okay, pause. Good. Let's take a look. So the domain for a cube root, you can take the cube root of a negative. So you can take the cube root of any number. So that domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. Your output values, your range is also any, any real number because it goes down forever and up forever. Um, decreasing never, again, as you, as you can see by the graph here, it's going very slowly, but it is getting higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. It just keeps increasing and increasing. So it increases from negative infinity to infinity, which means it's never decreasing. Um, this is another odd function. Um, and again, you can see that it's got that rotational symmetry, 180 rotational symmetry. So you get the exact same graph. If I had drawn it better, it would look like that. The other interesting thing about the cube root function, uh, if you're comparing it to the, uh, whoops, sorry, if you're comparing it to the previous one to the cube function, you might notice that x cubed and x and the cube root of x have a something in common. Uh, there's the cube x cubed, and there's the cube root of x. That if I just rotate it 90 degrees and then flip it, it looks exactly like. There's x cubed, there's the cube root of x. They actually look exactly the same. Um, just going back a little bit, when you look at x squared and the square root of x, that actually also happens here. The only difference is it doesn't really complete the parabola because it's not defined over here for the square root. But there's obviously a connection between square roots and, and, and squared. Same thing with cube root and cubes. OK, so that's it for our parent functions. Now let's do a little quick review of some transformations that you're already familiar with. Just a, again, a little review. Uh, we're just going to focus on translations here, and we'll we'll get into other stuff in class later today. Ooh, I, I better hurry up because that means it's my lunch time and I'm getting hungry. Okay, um, so translations. That's when we slide left, right, up, or down. Uh, so we're going to look at what that does in a function. So horizontal translation, that's right or left. And you may remember from Algebra 2 that uh, when the, the x is being changed, right? when the x is being changed, this is the one that was always backwards. If it's minus 3, it actually moves it 3 units to the right. And if it's an x plus 3, it moves 3 units to the left. Um, so in a, in a function, you can see that. And again, it doesn't have to be squared. That's any function. If it's affecting the x, um, that's left and right. Um, using function notation, um, it's, you know, the, in function notation, if you subtract something from the x, it's going to move it to the right that many units. And if you add something to the x before you plug it in, it's going to move it that many units to the left. Um, and we'll get a little more into what that looks like in function notation a little later. But just wanted to give you a heads up that that's coming. Um, and then vertical translations up and down, so that's when it, the change is after the squared or the square root or the absolute value or whatever the function is. And this one behaves more the way we'd expect. Plus 3 means it's moving up 3, minus 3 means moving down 3. Um, and in function notation, that is, it's being added afterwards. So in other words, it's not changing the x, it's changing the y. Um, so it's, in, you see in function notation, it's not changing the x, it's not what you're changing there, 
it's being added on after the fact. And that may not totally make sense, but again, we'll, we'll get into that more in class tomorrow. That's all for now. Have a great day.